What I'm not liking is that it's showing section cuts or these section markers through all of the internal elevations. Now what we can do is hide them in each view, but that can be way too time consuming. We're also gonna have issues then if we change our mind and decide that we do wanna show them on the internal elevations. So surely we can set up a template so that we can make a change to this internal elevation and then it shares that change with all of the other internal elevations within the project. In fact, we can do that with view templates. If I select this viewport here, this games room internal elevation one, and I scroll down to the view template under identity data in the properties panel, you'll see that it's got no view template currently assigned to it. If we click on that none button, what we can do is create a new or we can choose a preset here from the architectural template and we can assign a view template to this view. If we select the architectural elevation, it's gonna come up with a whole list of different parameters and values which are assigned to the view. If I apply this view template, you're going to see that all of the values of the parameters in this preset view template, all of those values are going to be assigned to this view. So you saw that one of those parameters was that the view scale is at a scale of one to 100. You're also going to see that the detail level is set as coarse and there's a few other things as well. So just like that, we've changed the style of this internal elevation with the click of one button. And we could do the same thing if we wanted that same style for this internal elevation, we could go to view template and assign that same architectural elevation preset and apply it to that view as well. And you're gonna see that now puts it at a scale of one to 100 and it's going to have a coarse detail level, which you can see down here. But what you'll see is that now, if we want to change the scale of this view, we can't actually do that from the bottom down here. All of these things are being assigned through the view template. And so if you wanted to change the scale of this view, you would have to change the scale of the view template. So I'm gonna come down to that view template if I change the scale to one to 20, like we had before, and I apply that, you're going to see that that's going to change the scale of these two drawings back to one to 20. They still have that view template assigned, but we've just changed the scale of both of them from that one place. But I don't actually like that view template. It's a default Revit template, so it's not the best. But what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this and make my own template. And I'm going to call this internal elevation. And what I usually like to do is put my name before it just to show that this is in fact something I've created and not something that Revit has created. So already you can see that it's taken the information from that um, view and it's created a template from it. The view scale is set for one to 20. The display model is set to normal. The detail level is set to coarse. We could make this fine if we wanted to. I'm just gonna press okay. And now I'm going to set that same internal elevation view template to all three of these other views. So if I come down to the view template with all three of them selected, I can go click on the KS internal elevation and I'm going to apply this to those views. And you won't see much change, but that is now applied those view templates to them. So if I wanted to change the scale of this in here, it won't actually let me. I would have to come down to the view template and change it in this mode. If I change the view scale to one to 50 in the view template and apply it, you'll see that it affects all of those internal elevations. This is a really good and effective way of changing the style of all of your drawings. For all of the projects I work on, I have a whole number of different view templates that are set up for me so that if I have my ground floor plans, all I need to do is just assign the view template to the floor plan and it's going to automatically change all of these settings for me. So now what we can do with this view template, we can also change the visibility graphics override settings. And that's this VG override model here. So whenever we press VV, that's gonna bring up this visibility graphic override settings. But what we can do is change that instead from this view template. And by doing so, what we can do is edit that. We can go to the annotation categories and we can search for sections. We don't want the sections to show in these internal elevations. So I'm just gonna untick it and that's just unticking its visibility. And now if I apply that, you're going to see that the sections are going to disappear on all of the internal elevations. So rather than going through each of these internal elevations to remove that those section markers and hide them away, I've just done it with the click of one button by having 
this assigned to the internal elevation view template. Now this is also a way to graphically control these internal elevations. Let's say that we wanted the model display to be shaded. I can edit that and change the style to shaded, click apply, and you'll see that they all become shaded models now. But obviously that doesn't look very good, so I'm gonna keep it them all as hidden line and apply that. And you can see it's changing the settings for all of these views. So when I start a new project, I'll always have view templates set up inside of my new template. These templates will be set up for the floor plans, elevations, the sections, the internal elevations, 3D views, all of this sort of stuff. I'll have them all set up so that I can just change the settings of them all with the click of one button. This will make sure that you've got a consistent graphic to your drawings and so that they all look the same rather than changing the settings on just one drawing and then they don't represent in other drawings. So I'm going to go back to this other project of mine. I'm going to look at the view template, which is this internal elevation template, which is um, very similar to what we've got in our project that we've just made. But what you're going to see is that I've got a few changes in the visibility override graphic settings. You're going to see that the patterns of all the ceilings are grayed out. So they're grayed out as a solid fill. This is something that I like to do to show things like the bulkheads or stuff like that in a gray rather than a white. You'll also see that I've unticked and ticked different parts of the project. You can see that planting is not visible in the internal elevations because I don't need to see the planting in the, in the distance. You'll see that my walls, they have projection lines and patterns that are different. The color of the surface patterns of walls are actually a lighter color rather than being black. And this helps just make it a bit more readable. You'll see that the cut patterns and the cut lines for the walls are also different. If there are walls being cut through, you'll see them as a darker gray. If we go to the annotation categories, you'll also see a few different changes in here as well. You'll see that the grids are half toned. So they're not super bold. They're just kind of there in the distance, but their color has been halved. So they're a mid gray rather than a black. So it's definitely worth setting up some view templates for yourself. And from doing so, you'll be able to create your own architectural graphics and your own visualization style in your Revit drawings. So that's just a quick introduction to view templates. But once we start to stylize this project, I'll show you how you can use the view template in a lot better and more efficient way to stylize your drawings. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.